the, th the thing that you've got to do, though, is ask yourself, how, how have you been approaching trading? Do you honestly believe that your approach to trading is the way that professional traders approach trading? Or do you approach trading the way hobbyists might approach trading? And I'm going to give you some guidelines, some, some things, some questions to ask yourself. So for many of us, having screens and charts and, and tools and knickknacks and all kinds of cool stuff, collecting information is fascinating, okay? Having all this stuff to look at can be absolutely fascinating and a whole lot of fun. And you get to a point where you start looking at this stuff and you know what each individual thing does and what it means and, and you might even know a little bit about why it's doing what it does. And so having all of this information at your fingertips makes you really feel like you're into the markets, right? You really kind of, you might feel like, you know, I've got something here. This is the conventional wisdom. I need more data and more information. Remember the picture of the guy looking at all this stuff. Man, was I impressed with how many screens I had, with how many charts I had, with how many indicators, how many time frames, how many trade rooms I listened to, how many systems I was working on and developing. I was, man, I was impressed with myself. And all the stuff that I had read and all the, all the videos that I had watched, I thought I was really cool and onto something. And boy, when somebody walked into my office and they saw this stuff, they thought I was knocking it out of the park. They're like, with all this stuff, man, you must be making a killing at trading. And, you know, I generally didn't tell the truth. So many of us have the unrealistic expectation based on conventional wisdoms that this could be a true model. Now. Even if this was a true model, most of us are still even trying to shorten this. And we'll go from collecting more data and assuming that we can go right to mastery. Okay? That lots of data equals mastery. Okay? You've all done it. We've all done it. I've done it looking for the shortcut. If I don't have to spend a lot, you know what? I spent seven years looking for a shortcut, looking for the easy way. Always saying, you know, I, I, I don't need to do this. I, I know there's somebody out there. There's a group of people out there who are successful traders and they're willing to uh, share all of this information, this data with me so I know when to push the button, and if I just keep looking, I will find them. They are there. I know they're there. So you just keep looking and looking, attempting the shortcut. So the fact of the matter is I was nothing but a hobbyist. And if this sounds or looks like you – you might want to decide if maybe you're a hobbyist too and not somebody who's approaching trading the way it needs to be approached to be successful. Okay, so here's some – and this uh, – this, I want everybody to make sure you're paying attention to this point. I'm going to ask you – I want you to ask yourself some questions. I want to listen to this and see if you see yourself in any of this. If you have any questions about this, I'm not going to stop and, and answer questions, but I will be happy to answer emails. Or if you take exception to anything I say here, I'll be happy to have a, a conversation with you. Just send me an email, okay? So is this you, okay? And this, this is a hobbyist list. If any of these things sound like you, you might be a hobbyist, okay? Do you spend a lot of time reading and writing and trading forums? I can promise you something. Professional traders don't have the time or inclination to be spending time in trading forums. 
I haven't been on a trading forum in years unless I stumble on one because I have a specific question about something. If you spend a lot of time trying to learn how to trade by watching YouTube videos, you're probably a hobbyist. It sounds a lot like these redneck things, right? <laughs> if you think the answer to whatever you need is out there somewhere, and you believe that uh, spending lots of time gathering information at webinars like this is what you're going to need, and someday you're going to hear that thing. That thing. Finally, that guy that came on with that thing that makes me successful. Okay, if you're looking for that guy or that thing, then you're probably a hobbyist. Of course, you read a lot of books on trading and trading psychology. I've read a bunch of them. Um, downloading every free indicator you can get your hands on. Um, here's one. Here's a good one. Because you finally believe that uh, you're, you've uh, been unable to take a trading system that maybe you've you've got or you've learned about on a video or you've um, you've been in a in a trade room or you uh, you know you've tried all these different things and none of them have worked for you. So the next step is you try to create your own trading system. Right? Have any of you ever tried to create your own trading system? I think we all have. You do a lot of back testing. Oh, yeah. So many people ask me for back test results. We don't get back test results. Why don't we get back test results? Because back testing doesn't work. How many people have spent time back testing a system or a strategy? And then actually tried to trade it. What happened? But if you've ever back tested a trading system, I can pretty much guarantee you that when you actually start to uh, try to trade it, it never, you never get the same results. If you spend a lot of time scrolling through static charts to try to figure out what's going on and, and good trades to take, if you just like, you know, you have a chart and you and you do a lot of this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's so oh there's one. Oh yeah, that well that looks interesting. Oh well let's see what that okay. Then you're probably approaching trading like a hobbyist. If you start and stop a lot. And I know many of us can't devote uh, full time to trading, but if if trading doesn't have a high enough priority where you're able to work around uh, the you know other things going on in your life, then maybe you're you're approaching it as a hobbyist to a point. Okay, so you have to kind of ask yourself that question: Is it something you're determined and dedicated to? Or is it something that you think you're just going to learn in your free time? You jump around a lot from trading system to trading system, okay? And and you either see something you like and jump to it, and then suddenly you can't make it work, and you go to the next one, and oh that one doesn't work, and you jump to the next one, and then you jump back to the first one, and then maybe you combine two of them, and then you you spend a lot of time jumping around, never really concentrating and focusing on any one thing. Okay, I take a lot of I take a lot of heat for this. I find it interesting how many people are on the hunt for auto traders, and how many companies will offer auto traders, and how many different versions of auto traders there are, um, and how many auto traders do not work. They might work for a while. But they will eventually stop working, and you usually don't know until it's too late. Now, the reason I say this is a uh, what a lot of hobbyists will do is because what they're trying to do is remove themselves from the equation. 
okay, that that since they have been unable to trade like a professional trader, they finally just decided, screw it. I, I don't have what it takes. I wasn't born to be a trader, which, by the way, none of us are. So you take this whole attitude of, well, you know, since I wasn't born to be a trader, maybe I can just get the computer to do it for me. So you turn, now your next hunt is, okay, you've decided you can't do it. I'm going to make a machine that does it, okay, because machines can, can certainly do it. How, you know, it seems like we'd all know a lot about auto traders out there and a lot of auto traders making money if they actually worked for any extended period of time. Okay, that's the same as the quest for some trade room from some guy that'll just tell you when to push the button. Okay, you have everything you need to trade successfully. You don't need an auto trader. You already have what you need to trade successfully. We'll talk about that more later. I came up with this because I, I, I spent time coming up with this list thinking about what I did in my past. And I would paint myself in a corner because I couldn't accept that losing a trade was part of trading. If I ever took a loss, I would go, I would do everything. How could I have filtered out that loss but still took all the winners, okay? If you spend an awful lot of time thinking more about trying to filter out losses than you do trying to identify an edge, okay? Just, that's all you need in trading is an edge. If you spend more time Trying to filter losses rather than trying to determine a definitive edge, then you're probably approaching trading like a hobbyist. I realize this is probably angering some of you. Or some of you think I'm full of crap. But I've already been where a lot of you are. I've already been through all of this. And it's not until you have you allow yourself to think a little bit differently about trading that some of the stuff becomes very very obvious if you try if you try and believe you can trade without emotion and that you decide you're going to dedicate yourself to trading without emotion and i know it's a classic mantra out there you've got to be like a machine you've got to trade without emotion you've got to just stick to the plan you've got okay Boring, trading is one of the boring, most boring things I do every day. We're here in the trade room, and I'll sit, and I'll watch the charts, and I'll call out trades, and I put on a trade, and I honestly couldn't care less if that particular trade wins or loses. I promise you, and if you're in our trade room, you'll know I don't care. I don't get excited. I don't get depressed. I don't really care. Because I already know definitively, without a doubt, my trading system has an edge. And I know it has an edge because I've done the, the study, I've collected the data, I've turned that data into knowledge by experience, by practice, by research, you know, all of that stuff I was talking about. I've done the work. And I've gotten to the point of being able to trade without emotion because I know I have an edge. It doesn't matter if I win or lose the next trade. I don't care because I know I'm going to win more than I lose. If you don't have time to do the hard work that I'm talking about, the practice, the study, the getting the experience, if you think you just everything you need to know you're going to get by sitting and watching the charts during live trading during market hours, if you think that's all you need to do, then you're probably not approaching it like a professional trader. Yeah, a lot of us still have the unrealistic expectations of trying to just, I just want to make a lot of money really fast. If I ask you what you're trying to do in trading, most of you are going to say, make a lot of money. I put <laughs> this, I hope my father is not listening. He, uh, he was a trader for a while. And he was talking to me one day about uh, he didn't he didn't he stopped trading he never did tell me why, um, but uh, he stopped 
But he was going on and on into how fascinated he was with trading, which kind of started this whole thing for me, I, I guess. And he was so fascinated by everything in the markets, by all the data, by all the different influences in the markets and what made the markets tick and what made the what made the big money do what they were doing and he was he was reading up on all about the age anyway he was all fascinated about the markets and i'm sitting there listening to him me as a professional trader him as a as a past trader who was no longer trading and i'm listening to him and i'm thinking i don't find this fascinating at all i kind of it's really 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 boring and if you train like a weekend warrior, that's pretty much what you're going to get out of it. You know, professionals train like professionals. Weekend warriors just show up and play. Right? You know, anybody that likes to go just play tennis on the on the weekend when they have time. You don't call yourself a tennis player necessarily. It's just something you like to do. It's fun. But if you train at trading... If you work at trading by just showing up, that's what a hobbyist does, All right? Or maybe none of these things apply to you. Maybe I've been talking and talking and talking and you don't see yourself in any of that. So maybe this is you. Maybe you don't have time to do the things that most other hobbyists like to do, okay? Like a lot of the stuff on this list here. Maybe you're too busy at the business of trading to peruse forums, to do lots of backtesting, to working on a brand new trading system, to watching YouTube videos, all of that. Maybe you just don't have time. Have you created a strict set of rules? Strict. I mean, I mean, like, you don't have a choice. If a trade setup comes up, there's no, oh, I think I'll take this. Oh, maybe I won't take it this time. Oh, I just took three losses in a row, so I'm, I don't want to trade now. If you have a strict set of rules, you just, bam, you just do it. You trade it. You spend time practicing your trading. not reading, not watching videos, not trying different indicators on your charts, not scrolling through a, a static charts, practicing your, your trading. A lot of you don't have the first clue what I mean by practicing your trading. If you study live price action on active charts, okay, so that can be via uh, live charts or uh, better than that, uh, Replay charts in NinjaTrader using market re replay. Price action will tell the story. Static charts will not. Can you tell me how this bar developed by looking at this bar? Can you tell me whether it went from here, slowly went up to here, hit this high, and then came back here, closed, and the next bar opened here? Or did it jump up, comes flying back down here, and then bounce around, bounce around, bounce around, and finally uh, close here? Can you tell me that by looking at this? If you can't, then you don't have the first notion on what was really going on at the time. Okay? You have a piece of information, but not enough information. Okay? To know exactly what was going on. So, you know about managing risk. Okay, you spend a lot of time knowing and understanding risk management. And mine is so stupid simple. So stupid simple. Mine is make money, put it back in the trading account. Get out of the markets as quickly as possible. The longer you're in the markets, the more risk you're taking. I want to be in, out, take a little bite, put it in the bank. And I want to do it over and over and over again. That's simple, stupid, simple risk management. 
I don't try to manage my emotions because I'm, I'm bored to begin with. So there's really no emotion management. Trying to manage your emotions means that you are inclined to do something that you know you shouldn't do. Right? Like, like and I use this example most of the time because I think we can all probably relate to being on a diet, walking past a cupcake, Wanting to eat that cupcake because you know a cupcake is going to be just so good, but you know you're not supposed to. You know it's against what you're trying to accomplish. You know you're not going to accomplish your goals if you eat it, but you've got to tell yourself, do not eat that cupcake. Do not eat. Okay, so that's trying to manage your emotions. I don't have that problem with when you have a system, when you have an edge, you know you have an edge, and all you have to do is follow the rules. To exploit that edge, there's no emotion management necessary. So I don't, I don't even think about it. Yeah. So my faith is not in what I know, not in my knowledge about, like what I'm talking to you about right now. My faith is that 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 I'm going to continue to be a successful trader is what I've experienced. My experience is what gives me the ability to act when when the time comes in a trade with unconscious competence meaning I'm going to do the right thing every time and I'm going to do it automatically because I've practiced because I have experience I've done the hard work it's not what I know it's what I've experienced Um, traders have daily routines just like any other profession you're going to show up you're going to do the same thing you're going to do it the same way you're going to do it the same every day you're going to establish a time of days that you work days certain days that you work you're going to establish when you're going to do your practice session when you're going to do your trade analysis when you're going to be revising and updating your uh, trade plan you're going to have a schedule when all of these things happen, this is what professionals do. This is what professionals do in any line of work. With and I, I like to use sports analogies because it's because this is a trading is a participatory type of an activity. You know, we're we're competing for every winner. There's a loser. Um, so uh, it, if you think more about the way a professional athlete has their routine. So do professional traders. So this is part of the routine when you have when you actually establish what hours are you going to trade, what hours are you going to practice, what hours are you going to study, uh, what hours are you going to do your trade analysis and you update your trade uh, uh, journal um, and, and potentially review your trade plan. You're gonna have it's gonna be a regular regular thing you do every day. Real traders have expectations that they're gonna have regular losses. There's a big problem. As I was talking earlier, you're going to have losses. I expect to have losses. I couldn't care less. Here's here's the thing that bothers me about losses. I call out to the trades that I take in the trade room before I take the trade. I'll tell everybody what I'm doing. Here's what I'm wanting. Here's what I'm going to do next if these conditions are in place. So before I get into a trade, I tell everybody what I'm looking at and what I'm about to do. And then when I get in the trade, I tell them when I'm in the trade. Okay? The problem, the biggest problem I have is if that trade loses or I have more trades that lose, if there are new people in the room or people who maybe are just visiting with us and they don't understand, they think, oh, he just uh, lost a trade. Well, how can he be a professional if he just lost a trade? So I feel bad that they, they may leave. And believe me, I can see when people come and go. And a lot of times, if I take a loss or two, people will be like, oh, well, this is no good. This guy can't trade. He's lost a couple of trades. I'm out of here. Okay. I feel bad for that reason. For me personally in my trading account, I have a pretty regular income from trading. 
And I know from month to month, my income's not going to vary that much. Because I have losses factored into every single day. I may or may not have a loss in a day, but I, then again, I might have two or three. So I expect to have losses. It's part of it. My focus, remember I said a few minutes ago, if I asked you guys, what are you trading for? You'd say, well, I'm making a lot of money. Making a lot of money is a byproduct of what I do. It is not what I try to do. If I do my job correctly, then I'll make money. So what I'm actually trying to do is become consistent. If I can consistently enter, manage, and exit a trade the exact way I'm supposed to, then I will make money because I've already we have a defined edge with our trading system. We've got hundreds of people trading it, and it's been proven over and over. The proof is in the data. Okay, So trading is just a means to an end for me. I, I no longer find it as fascinating as I used to. I actually have much more fun doing what I'm doing here now, talking to you guys. Um, I still train like a professional athlete. And, and this is interesting because this slide is pretty old. Um, but I uh, watched in the Super Bowl. And I talked about this in the trade room the other day. Um, watching the Super Bowl, and I was watching the, the, the pregame warm -up, And I'm watching these guys who are about to play in the biggest game of their life. They obviously know what they're doing. They, they, they are professionals. They, and, and they are all lined up running the offensive plays that these guys know inside out. They're not practicing because they're trying to learn something. They haven't made the assumption that we're so good because we're in the Super Bowl that we don't need to practice anymore. Heck no, these guys were running plays, the very basic plays that they were running on the very first day of practice. They're running them now 30 minutes before the start of the Super Bowl. That's what professionals do. If you're not doing this, think about it. Are you really trying to be a successful trader or are you a hobbyist? Okay? So if your answer is, I'm a hobbyist and I like being a hobbyist, I want to stay that way, great. That's great. I have nothing against those of you who want to learn how to trade or, or work at trading and you want to be a hobbyist. Not, nothing against it at all. I believe it can be a lot of fun. But what you need to do is embrace the fact that you're a hobbyist, have fun with it, understand that that's what you're doing, and then adjust your expectations of what you think you're going to get out of it. Okay? You could be a video game player and, and just do it for fun because you like it, or you could become a professional video game player, which I just found out not that long ago that there was such a thing. All right? So adjust your expectations. If you're doing it for fun, great. Do it for fun. Just don't expect that you're going to get to a point where you can regular and potentially substantial income. Okay? Now, say you want to be a trader. Okay, you don't want to be a hobbyist. Okay, maybe you've identified yourself. Oh, crap, maybe I'm a hobbyist. Create some new habits. Okay, commit to doing the hard work. Practice, study. Do the analysis. Do it every day. Do it to the point where it is such a habit that you feel uncomfortable not doing it if you, you walk away from your desk and you realize there's something I should be doing. I should be... I'm forgetting something. I know there's something I can't, I can't quite put my, you know, when you feel that way because you haven't done the hard work, you're now getting somewhere, okay? You're working on creating a new habit. Become accountable for your decisions. Here's a kind of a little game on how you do that. And, and we go over this a lot more in our uh, VIP uh, program, okay? We have these aha sessions, and this is where I teach you the, a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about here. We have Many, many, many sessions on all this. Pretend that you're, you work for a company and that you're the lead trader for the company. And you're accountable for your decisions to a boss. Okay? Play that little game. Okay? 
become experienced. Experienced, what I mean by that is become conditioned to doing the right things and doing them over and over and over and over again until you don't even have to think about it anymore. Relentlessly pursue to better your execution of the trades, the entry, exit, and trade management. We do that by practicing. You do not practice during live trading hours. That's not practice time. That's game time. You, game time is not when you practice new things. You do that in practice time, after trading hours or before. Define your personal risk tolerance, uh, whether you want to be a, a, a very conservative trader or a very aggressive trader uh, or somewhere in between, most likely. But you, you can be your own kind of trader as long as you know and understand what your personal risk tolerances are, personal and financial risk tolerances. Set achievable goals. Okay, Make a lot of money is a dream. Okay. Quit my job and trade for a living is not a goal. It's a dream. You've got to know the difference. And the big one, narrow your focus. Become the best in the world at something specific. Somebody, somebody said something about uh, I try to trade with as little information as possible on the charts. And that's exactly what we did. We don't want too much information. Um, so if you narrow your focus and you find something very specific that you're trying to accomplish on each and every trade and you try that very specific thing and that's all you do, become a specialist at and only that. Don't worry about all the other stuff that's going on out there. All those other styles of trading that are out there. All those things that you read on, on forums that people do and are trying to seem like such a good idea. Narrow your focus and become a specialist. All right, so everything that I've talked about on, on how to become a, uh, a trader for, a, uh, uh, for an income, there is an assumption there. The assumption is you have a system with a demonstrable edge, meaning that you can prove that edge to yourself or anybody else. If you were going out looking for an investment in your trading business, could you take your edge, show it to an investor, say, here, see this, this is why I have an edge and you should invest in my business. If you don't have that, what the hell are you doing? If you're trading with live money and you couldn't just go to an investor and say, here, see this? This is proof I have an edge. You've got no business trading. Not until you know you have an edge. So how do you, wh what do you do? Well, like everything else in life, keep it simple. It is so easy to make trading complicated, isn't it? Isn't it just the easiest thing in the world to make trading complicated? Just have a real simple step-by-step -step process. If condition one exists, then go to condition two. If it doesn't, no trade. If condition two exists, but condition three doesn't, then stop, then no trade, okay? So it's really easy. It's a step-by-step -step process. So it's about as simple as, as it can get, okay? So if you look at something like this, this is basically what we're looking for. This is our edge. We're looking for a big move relative to what's been going on recently. Simple. You go look at any chart. You'll see it all the time. All right. So, and if you're starting to snooze, I want you to wake up here and pay attention. This edge that we're looking for, and the reason we're looking for this, and it happens all the time is this creates opportunities, but not for us. This creates opportunities for other traders. When other traders take advantage of those opportunities, that's when we know it's our turn, okay? 
So we're waiting for this to happen. And so what, what always happens when, when you see this event is one of two things. See this long bar, right? This, this big push here. If people were in the market and they were short, what are they going to do? They're going to hit the panic button. They're either going to be getting stopped out or they're going to be jumping out and trying to save their butts. Okay? Or, if you're long, there's an excellent opportunity to start taking some profits. Okay? So both of these things create an opportunity for us. It happens all the time. It happens in any markets that have any type of liquidity and any markets where the market makers want to manipulate the markets. So what we're looking for is a sudden and unexpected dramatic event. Okay? We want to know what the, uh, when that event happens because we know that the crowd is going to react. The people that are trading are going to react a certain way every time. Like this crowd, I, I don't have the video of this, but I know the next thing they're going to do after the danger has passed is they're going to put their hands down. All right, so let's look at this. This is step by step, okay? Step by step. This is how we qualify trades. This is today, by the way. This is this is, just came off a chart from today. Step one, we've got momentum. You can tell by these dark bars. This is our mo meter indicator.